You don't need one of these. You don't need an 18% gray card anymore unless you're doing a specific kind of photography. In this video, I'm going to show you when to use it and how to use it. So watch it now. First off, welcome back subscribers. And if you're new here, thanks for checking me out. You're going to find lots of tutorials on photography, cameras, photo editing software, and all things relevant, especially if you're a beginner. So please subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. The Kodak 18% gray card is used for metering purposes, not for white balance. It might be a coincidence that it's neutral, but I've taught in classrooms and all my students have put their gray cards together on a table and guess what? They were different colors. So perhaps yours is neutral, but no guarantee. If you want a guaranteed neutral, use a white balance tool such as an X-Rite color checker or a Weibull. All right, let's get back to metering. So the gray card is used for metering. It is 50% black, 50% white, and it is what we consider an average scene. Kodak developed this as a way of calibrating all cameras, including, at the time, motion picture cameras and film cameras, and also to calibrate light meters. Okay, so this light meter I bought in about 1979 or 78 or something, and I've been using it for years. These two in combination work, but right now your camera has a built-in light meter. All modern cameras do, so you don't even need a light meter anymore. But if you want to use one, this is how you use it. You either measure the light falling on you from, let's say, the sun or studio lights, or you measure the light reflected, and you remove this globe, reflected from the scene. And if you want to meter the light reflected from the scene and get perfect exposure, you measure it against a gray card. So you measure the light reflecting from the gray card. That's like pointing your camera at the gray card and that's why a gray card is a calibration tool. So what you do is you hold the gray card in front of your artwork, you take a meter reading either using one of these meters or your camera meter and you set that as your exposure for all your copy work under the same lighting conditions. So I'm going to show you in detail how that works. To make copies of artwork or old photographs, what you need to do is meter off the gray card. So take, put your camera in manual mode and make note of the meter reading, set your camera, don't change anything. What you want to do when you check the exposure of the gray card is you have to make sure that it completely fills the frame. So you can zoom in and take a meter reading. So you can see here that it's a 60th of a second at f5.6. Okay, so that is the exposure that we need to shoot our painting at. Get rid of the gray card, add your painting or your photograph. You don't change a thing once you've set your meter reading. And you can see here on the camera, it's 5.6 at a 60th of a second. And take a photo using the same meter reading that the gray card gave you. And this way you will have a perfectly exposed photograph of your painting, your artwork, or your old photos. Now you can do this with LED lights or tungsten lighting, but it doesn't work with strobe lights. With strobe lighting, you need a different kind of metering method, and that is using an incident light meter that measures strobe lights. This is for reflected light metering using a gray card. When you look at your histogram of the resulting photo, you can see that nothing is blown out, that the histogram is not what I call climbing the walls. You have full detail in the white values of your photo because this particular painting has white clouds in it. So you don't want those to be blown out. You want to retain detail in your highlights. So you always want to double check your histogram too in case you know something screwed up or maybe something changed by the time you did your gray card reading and took your photo. But once you get your lighting set up, you don't have to change anything. You just keep just switching photos or switching paintings. And what I try to do is photograph things of the same size all at once. So I group things by size and that way you don't have to change too much with your lighting or, uh, or your camera setup. Another thing to remember before you start shooting paintings, especially because the color is very important, is you want to do a custom white balance. You want to do that in camera. Don't use your gray card for white balance. They are not the same kind of cards. You want to use a, a Weibull card or an X-Rite card, and I have a video showing you how to use the X-Rite card. So look that up first and set up your white balance and then set up your exposure using the 18% gray card, and you're good to go. 
So let's have a look at our finished product. Here's the copy I made of this artwork. Well, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit those bell notifications so you don't miss another one of my videos. Catch you next time.